This is Twit. Now, our first bite is the amazing backstory of the evolution of GPS. Now, Greg Milner does a great job in his New Yorker article here about the journey of GPS and its proliferation. But I also want to talk a little about the GPS technology and maybe even some of the dependencies we have here. Because I'll tell you one thing, GPS is ingrained within our daily lives, both personally and professionally. And when technology reaches a point like that, it becomes a target as well. Now, let's take the story back here to midnight June 20th of 2012. Now, that's when Todd Humphreys made the final preparations for his attack on the GPS system. Now, on a hill just a kilometer away, his team actually gathered around a flat metal box the size of a carry-on suitcase. Now, the electronic machinery inside the box was called a spoofer. Now, it was a, actually the weapon name. Now, soon a Hornet Mini, a drone-operated helicopter popular with law enforcement and rescue agencies, was scheduled to appear 40 feet above them. Then the spoofer would be put to test. Now, that's when they start talking about just how just how risky it is to use sometimes GPS, depending on the type of attack you have. Now, think about GPS. GPS is available for free to anyone in the world. There are 24 active GPS satellites orbiting in 20,000 kilometers, each emitting a radio signal containing a time code and a description of the satellite's exact position. Now, by measuring the transmission of time of the signal, a GPS receiver determines its distance from the satellite. Now, if the receiver does this simultaneously with the signals of at least four satellites in its line of sight, it can actually extrapolate its position in three dimensions. Now, during the roughly 67 milliseconds the signal takes to reach us, it grows exceedingly faint. So there's, cause it, there's actually a problem there. The task of receiving the signal and extracting its information component is often compared to trying to read it using a light bulb in a different city far away, right? Now, this system's core technology has remained the same since the first GPS satellite was launched in 1977, but its uses uses actually have proliferated at a really astonishing speed. Now, the reason the number of GPS receivers could double tomorrow without affecting the underlying infrastructure at all is just because of the timing part of it. Now, the GPS has been out for many years, and it's had some controversies as well. Now, this article goes into the history and the debate behind it, but I do want to go into the crucial components of GPS and just how a change and a disruption of service can actually have a domino effect on the world. Now, GPS is crucial to many different systems that are actually unrelated to geolocation systems. Now, because GPS clocks are actually synchronized to within nanoseconds, the network signals are used to actually unify time-dependent systems spread over large areas. Now, GPS time actually helps bounce calls between cellular towers, regulate power flows and electrical grids, and timestamp financial trades on major exchanges. Now, if a spoofer were to actually feed bad data or information that confused the clocks in even a few nodes of these systems, the damage could actually be widespread. Actually, you have as time errors multiply, communication systems would fail. Wrongly apportioned power flows could result in blackouts and automated training programs could yank themselves out of the market, causing crashes. Now, those are just a few scenarios to name a few. Now, we still have not figured out exactly how to safeguard technology that's so crucial yet so porous. But what this points out is we see consensus that GPS is wonderful, but we need to start cutting the habit on it, the dependency on it. Now, that's the first thing I want to talk about with everyone here, because it really is a problem that we depend on this a lot. Curtis, I want to throw this to you first. GP is something both that we both use personally and professionally, and we count it. We depend on it. But there's a failure point, right? There's there's a potential there to fail. Is this is this misguided trust in the technology? Well, it's certainly a single point of failure for many different things. Um, interestingly enough, navigation, especially commercial navigation, may or may not see it as a single point of failure. There are, in fact, backup systems that are available uh, going all the way back to uh, using uh, a, a compass and a sextant to find your your location. But for a lot of others, there is no way around it. Um, it's used in too many, you mentioned time applications. Uh, there are an awful lot of encryption uh, algorithms that are based on that mutually agreed upon time. Um, there are all kinds of different location um, applications where they don't have the backups in place. And those go down to uh, things like uh, farmers uh, making sure their, their crops are planted in nice straight rows or 
uh, crews grading surfaces where roads are going to be. So we have become amazingly dependent on the GPS technology just in a couple of decades. Uh, and it's going to be a rude surprise for lots and lots of industries if that ever goes away. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think the interesting thing about this is, like you said, it does depend on, you know, some of these technologies depend on the synchronized clocks. And I, I mentioned it a little bit. Cheaper, I want to throw this to you because obviously you've worked in networks for a very long time. And GPS is also a clock for most cell towers to actually coordinate calls and coordination. Is is this something that they should be depending on here, especially with how how viable and how how um, you know how open they are to attacks? Well, I think the reason why a lot of things are synchronized from the GPS clocks is because it's free. Um, <laughs> it's cheap. It's easy. I, I literally built a Stratum 1 NTP server. So I take the clock sync directly off the GPS constellation. And I built that for $65, you know, really cheap. You know, I don't have to buy something like a Symmetricon for like four grand. And the cool thing is I can even build my own GPS antennas now. Um, so when you start getting this kind of technology that accurate for that little money, you start getting some real widespread adoption. Now, our bacon isn't quite in the frying pan yet. <clears throat> uh, Texas Instruments is supposed to be coming out. Um, they've got it in beta and so forth a new type of chip, it's a new clock chip. So NTP, Network Time Protocol, got started because the clocks in PCs have been notoriously horrible. Uh, I don't know if you remember the old days, your PC clock could potentially drift as much as an hour away from actual clock over a period of a year. So, bummer. Anyway, uh, the TI chip is supposed to have a um, actual small chunk of cesium in it. So it's like an atomic clock, but it's a chip and it's supposed to be in a package cheap enough that you can integrate it in to replace the clock chips on modern PCs. <clears throat> Sadly, it hasn't shown up yet. Um, so that is a potential fix. But the GPS is nice. So like when um, I did a test, I wanted to go and find out what the real latency was over a point-to-point -point microwave link. I actually had GPS synchronized test gear from AdTech in Honolulu, and it was accurate enough that I could actually measure the accuracy, how fast was the microwave link. Can't do that with any other technology. So that's going to be interesting. And even my underwater observatories, even though they can't see GPS satellites, they use GPS fed from land over the network using um, a new version of a network time protocol called IEEE 1588 Precision Time Protocol, where instead of having only a one pulse per second clock, I can now get accuracy down into the microsecond range and a Another variation is being done. Um, I can't remember the name anymore, but the folks at CERN Laboratories are using it to use with their colliders, and those are down to nanosecond re resolution over the network. So, yeah, that cascade effect could get really, really big because there's an awful lot of things, cell phones, authentication, um, Active Directory, and things like that. If the clocks are too far off, things start breaking. I, I have actually had um, an active directory that wouldn't let me log in because the clocks on the servers were too far off. Bummer. <laughs> I do want to point that out. That's a good point because there are a lot of enterprise features that take advantage of EPS. They add new features and, and they say, hey, we're going to use GPS to help with not only the clock synchronization, but also uh, location-based data and geolocatable data. Now, Curtis, I want to throw this to you. Do you think that this is something that maybe 
enterprises shouldn't be doing? Is that irresponsible? It's just because it's potentially GPS is free, it's easy to implement, it's easy to put in their systems and, and build out new features around it. But that doesn't mean it's the best thing to do, especially since now we're seeing how vulnerable it is. So what do you think? Is this irresponsible? Is it something they should be doing? Or 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 is it, like Cheever said, add some fail safe in there and you should be good to go? Yeah, I'm going to agree with, uh, with Brian on this one. It, the fact is that for many, many applications, uh, especially when you get into the directional and, and guidance side of things, there aren't low-cost, easy-to-implement alternatives. Uh, you might as well go ahead, use GPS, but recognize that um, it, it can be spoofed, it can be attacked, and basically train your users to use a little bit of common sense. Uh, there was a great example of this a couple of years ago when uh, what is now generally acknowledged to be a Russian GPS spoofing attack left a bunch of sea captains uh, seeing their GPS show their large container ships sitting about 20 miles inland. Um, so they knew that this wasn't the case and they reacted accordingly everyone should be encouraged to do exactly the same. When it comes to timekeeping, once again, feel free to use GPS. It's accurate, it's fast, it's almost universally available, but make sure you have some sort of backup, whether that's a, a highly accurate on-site timekeeping device or a, a consistent link back to one of the universal time codes. Um, have a backup. Uh, it's advice that's good in so very many areas of enterprise IT. All right, redundancy, very important. Uh, Chibert, I want to throw the last question to you, especially around redundancy when it comes to networks and even cell networks and towers. What is there redundancy around here? Like, obviously, they're using GPS for this whole synchronization model, but what is the alternative here? And Curtis alluded to a couple there, but from network timing to to other server timing, so on and so forth. Is there really a good alternative here that's safe and reliable for, for organizations to depend on? Well, when you start talking about cell phone networks, um, one of the tricks that came up when we were doing some work for NATO was um, we literally laid fiber between um, dedicated cell towers. And so I actually had an atomic clock in my van. And I used that instead of GPS because, you know, we didn't want to have all our eggs in one basket. So they do exist. You can buy an atomic clock. They're not going to be as accurate as the one in Colorado, um, but they aren't bad. Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> just because your clock is a few seconds off or even a minute off, doesn't mean that your authentication is going to break. I think the last time I actually tried this, the magic number I think was three minutes before Active Directory barfed all over me. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of those weird, weird things. We actually discovered it. Actually, it was Wayne Rash and I that figured it out during a um, identity management shootout back in my lab um, in Honolulu. And that was... That was kind of an eye opener because it, it wasn't really discussed in polite company uh, very often. But I think people need to understand what, if authentication starts failing, especially you know if it's odd, it worked before. Check your clock because for some reason or another, I've actually seen some. I'm not sure if I'd call it malware. Maybe it's brokenware is a better description, where apps accidentally have changed the clock on my PC. You know, basically what it was is it changed the uh, time zone and um, it just kind of broke. So, yeah, someday. I If anyone from TI is listening, um, could someone contact me at chibert at twit.tv? What happened to your atomic clock chip? I saw... Um, I think it was in Science Magazine or something like that, about four years ago. And I'm wondering what happened to that product because that would solve an amazing number of problems, um, especially for cell phone operators. 
Right, right. Thanks, Chebert. Definitely, definitely redundancy, 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 and backup is a lesson learned here, especially when it comes to GPS.